Hello, Ryan here, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get on with it. This week, Xeno Threat releases on the PTU. We get a first look at Rivers on Planets. Delamar and Levski are gone. Plus, we hear about progress on hair, armors, and aliens. So the return of Inside Star Citizen was a good one. It kicked off looking at the terrain modification system. Now this system allows them to adjust the planet terrain on various scales by modifying the landscape while ensuring natural and realistic integration, like what we are seeing here with placing outposts. Next up, we saw them adding rivers. They started by using a river placement tool to place a spring where the source of water begins and then this will automatically determine where the water would flow by looking at the direction of the water is coming from. It then works out a path of least resistance, which will allow the river to flow naturally. It does have a check system to highlight places where the river would not naturally flow downhill and may require the dev to erode the path slightly to allow it to continue. And then once they have the path, they look to add more springs and then they score and clean the river path, which works out a more detailed path between these nodes that the river will take, as well as working out how much water will pass through each point, which will increase all the way down to the bottom where the river will end. After this, they place the geometry modifiers, which changes the terrain to show the path of the river like a deep trench and the banks at the side. And just to point out, the water that they added here is just using the sea water mesh rather than a dedicated river mesh. So do expect it to look way better once they create a dedicated river mesh. But next up, they alter the terrain around the river like in the real world. The water influences the ecosystems and usually creates more vegetation and growth around places where the water can be found. So right now they are experimenting with adding more foliage and ecosystems around rivers and areas of water. And what we see here is just a simple first test at using current vegetation assets to show how it'll populate around the river. Now the vegetation they used here is not native to Microtech and so they will change that later on. But you can see a realistic lush buildup of vegetation around the river making it look like the river has been there for thousands of years rather than it just being randomly plopped on the planet. Now once artists get hold of this it'll come to life so much more. This is just showing us that they have the tools to do this with just a few clicks and rivers will one day soon be cropping up around planets. Finally, for the planet modification tool, they actually showed off some R&D that they have been doing, which could allow for a future potential terrain deformation feature, like shooting grenades and having it create craters. Now, he did specifically say that there are no promises for anything at this time, and he was just messing around with it, but he does hope that they can use this in the future in some way. Now, we won't dive too deep into the potentials of the deformation feature, but it is very interesting to see, and it could unlock a whole wealth of new features. But anyway, all that we saw in this segment looked phenomenal. It's incredible how they can create a tool that not only makes the process of adding water to planets quick and easy, but to such a high standard that is visually impressive while at the same time highly realistic in how it travels through the landscape and alters that landscape. Pretty mind blowing and I cannot wait to see how each planet will look once it gets water implemented. For the second part of Inside Star Citizen, they had a chat with the teams about a recent combat summit, which is a big planning session to work out what they want to bring to the verse this year relating to all of the systemic features that we as the player have control over. Now, they're trying to create an environment which all makes sense and allows us to approach any scenario however we want. This combat summit is a way to involve everyone who has an influence or input in space combat so everyone is on the same page to find the best possible direction to continue on with. This year they focused on combat geometry, which is the way that the ships fly around each other during combat and how they fight each other. And one way that they plan to improve space and ship combat is with the introduction of capacitors to make the actions that we take during a dogfight more meaningful and impactful on what we see and do. Now capacitors do this by capping the behaviors while providing an instant visual and flight result. And this will apply to weapons, shields and thrusters, I believe. For ship weapons, they are looking into their behaviors and how they interact with the shields and the ballistic armors. And basically, they are not wanting meta gameplay for Star Citizen. They want each weapon 
to feel different and have a different role in combat. They're also wanting to really help define each ship role as well and make them mean more in the PU to help us make the right choice of what ship we want for each situation. Now they have a lot of work to do and the next step is prototyping to help determine what works and what doesn't. So it's great to hear them discussing all of this. Combat has massively improved last year and they seem to have a really good handle on its direction and I'm excited to see it progress further this year. In particular, having more defined roles for the ships and their weapons, really selling the variations between them and giving more need to make better choices. It'll be great to see what they can achieve in 2021 for ship combat. But with that said, that was Inside Star Citizen. Let's move on. So the first episode of Star Citizen Live this year was with two members of the character team answering our questions about all things characters. The first question was basically beards and what's happening with facial hair and they say yes they fully intend to release facial hair of many styles but their current priority is the new hair tech and once they have got all the squadron 42 characters set up and brought a range of new hairstyles using the new tech to the pu they will then look into beards next question is how is the new hair tech coming along and they say they have finalized their hair tools and have spent Quite a bit of time training up the team to use them which means the speed at which they can create hair has ramped up massively right now they are in the process of getting together enough choices of hairstyles using this new hair tech and then they will bring that as an update to the character creator in the pu and also do expect more traditional hairstyles at first as this is driven by the squadron 42 requirements and with it being a military single player game it means uniformity is more prevalent with more unique hair varieties coming once they have brought out this first batch. Next question is when will female clothing options catch up to the males? And they said that the current process now is that they make a male and female option at the same time but there was a big backlog of many items that they need to make female versions of and they will eventually catch up as and when they get the time to. Next question are there plans for clothing with modules maybe small personal scanners on the shoulder now they said this is more of a design question but right now they are actively working on new role armors like support and utility armors and just prioritizing which ones come first armor archetypes have been recently discussed which are for different professions so it does sound like those are already in the works very excited to see those come along Will we see more diversity in population was the next question and they said they don't want any children so don't expect to see children anywhere but they would like varying body types. Now height and weight variations won't be too diverse due to the metrics of the game so having characters fit in the seats but they do want to have some slight options. Next question is is there any updates on the space cow? So they said nothing has progressed on the Kazi Grazer cow. But they are working on creature stuff right now, which is quite exciting. Uh, they were reluctant to say exactly what they're working on, but apparently it's a space something. My guess would be the space whale, as this was one that they wanted to create. And with Crusader and Horizon progressing, it would make the most sense uh, to really sort of wow us when that comes along. But it's strange to keep it all hush hush, as we already know space whales are a plan. Anyway, next question is how are the Taveran and the Jian character concepts coming along? Now they said for the Taveran, they are taking a back seat as they want to flesh out things a bit further. But the Jian are the priority and they have passed concept stage and are now in modeling and are looking really good. Right now they are working on getting the facial rig animations looking as good as possible. So hopefully we'll get an update on them soon. Is there any status updates on the wear and tear on clothing, armor and weapons? They said it is still part of the plan and they have been working on some armor and dirt shaders and they've also made progress on getting the functionality back as it was slightly broken but nothing to show just yet. Of course we are getting wear and tear on ships in 313 so that might just be the starting point for that and we will see it trickle down to the rest of the items. Next question, will we ever be able to put armor on clothing without using an undersuit? So they said the current clothing and armors are separate and have their own individual systems. The armor and undersuits are set up for space use, whereas clothing, of course, is not. However, they are actively discussing combat clothing, armor and protection for planet side. Not suited for space, so they may choose to have clothing and armor capabilities and armor to layer over clothing sometime in the future, similar to what maybe a SWAT member would wear. Now I really love this idea, I do hope that they work out a good direction for this 
as it'll be a great new addition to the options we have planet side. What's the plan for tattoos, scars and implants is the next question. And they say they're still being discussed and don't have it fully locked into the plans on how to implement it yet. But they're basically figuring out how they want to implement it. Is it going to be accessible via the initial character customizer or as something to open up when in game somehow? Obviously, when Death of a Spaceman is implemented, they will need to do body modifications and scarring but they still need to find the best method of implementing them. And the same goes for tattoos as well. Uh, will you add medical mining and hauling uniforms in the future? And they say they are actively working on them right now. Stuff is being concepted at this moment, so I'm very happy to hear that. Will we see more rucksack core colours and some backpacks to attach to different armors and clothing? And again, they are actively discussing backpacks. In fact, they discussed it that morning. So we should hear more about this in the near future. Obviously, this is probably very important for when they bring in physical inventories having having a backpack to carry extra stuff of course the next question is where is the holographic subscriber helmet now they still want this to happen but it requires a new holographic shader and the graphics team who will be the people creating it are heavily invested in so much other high priority stuff like the gen 12 renderer for example now they did say that the graphics team have apparently just handed over a ton of new stuff for characters that make them look so much better Nothing specific was said, but they were very excited about this stuff. So hopefully we will see those improvements or even hear about those improvements soon. So next question, will our characters age? Now they said this is more of an upper echelon question, not something that they can technically answer. It's probably more of a deterioration rather than aging. And there is a lot of older men's and women's heads that were scanned yet to be implemented. So it's more likely you're going to choose the character head and then the age is set by that. But in Star Citizen lore, it does talk about how aging in the 30th century is different to what we know now. It's slowed down so much more and humans can reach the age of 120 while looking 60 or 70 years old. So if they do include aging, it won't be at the same scale that we know of today. Also, in regards to medicine in Star Citizen's universe, the technology has advanced so far that they are able to repair people using their own DNA to reconstruct limbs. But over time, that DNA would get lesser and lesser and you may require cybernetics. Next question is, will we be able to customize armor in the future, like picking more colors and insignia and so on? Now, they have not decided on the insignia yet, but they will allow us to choose material variants. Not entirely sure of what they mean there because surely the material of armor needs to be quite specific but they also want to make sure that helmets match the colors of the torso and arm armor as well as of right now they look kind of different in terms of like twilight on one helmet will look different to twilight on some torso so they're going to marry those up a bit and i really hope that we do get the option for insignia i do expect we will one day but it is a question of when next question will we get more underwear choices Right now, they say underwear is part of the base body as they don't want nudity in their game, but it's more about priorities. Should they focus on new gameplay armors or various underwear options? And then the final question is, what are the challenges with working on alien races? And one of them is facial speech and expression animations as the races obviously have different anatomies and so expressing emotions convincingly is very difficult. So there you have it, not a lot of new information to be gleaned from this episode of Star Citizen Live, but I'm very excited to see the new updates coming to characters like the hair tech that has been in the work for such a long time now, and the devs seem very excited by it, so I'm really looking forward to finally seeing it myself. Also, I do love the idea of role-specific outfits and armors for industry, as well as hearing about the potential for armors to wear over clothing. I feel like as an org owner, it'll be great to have armors and outfits ready for each division or profession in the verse. But with that said, let us move on. So Alpha 3.12.1 just released to the PTU for everyone. This patch brings a lot of bug fixes and the new upcoming Xeno Threat missions, which involve missions requiring players to take on a few Idris capital ships plus support the efforts of an AI-controlled UEE Javelin, as well as collecting packages from Rex with everybody working together. Now, I am yet to try this myself, and with it being on the PTU, they are still testing it and working on it, so be sure to jump in and see what you think. I will probably check that out later today, if not on stream tomorrow. On another note, CIG have slated that they are removing Delamar and its landing zone Levski from Stanton, which means the next time we see this, it'll be in its rightful location in the Nick system. 
They say they have come to the point where the testing on this location has concluded, but I think also the main reason for removing it is now to alleviate the pressure on the servers, which should hopefully improve desync and some other issues. It's getting to the point now where they are literally at capacity, and it's certainly showing in the verse. Also, Levski and Dilamau was created using the old tech, the same as Port Olisar's tech, which is not as efficient as the new tech. This is pretty much the issue they're facing right now until they can get iCache and eventually server meshing in to improve it, which is why the main focus this year, until they can implement those big features, is quality of life. I am more than happy for quality of life improvements as that is very important, but it does kind of mean they're stuck at this time. Now with this change to Levski, they say all the stock at the shops will be relocated to other shops around the verse. Reco Bataglia will be gone until Levski returns. And if you had your spawn point set to Levski, you will now respawn at Lawville. It is a shame to see it go, but it's also exciting to know that the next time we see it, it'll be rebuilt using the new tech in the Nyx system. There is a farewell screenshot contest to pay tribute to Levski, which I have linked the details in the description below. So also this week, the PU and Squadron 42 monthly report was released, covering all of the work over the course of November and December. I have broken down the Squadron 42 monthly report in a video already, and I will be working on bringing the PU monthly report sometime next week. And finally, there is a new United post taking a look at how the new Imperator, Lalani Addison, is settling in. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are provided below.